Okay, lads, this is uh, Construction Studies Question 1 um, video. It's based on the 2014 exam, last year's exam gone by. And we're just focusing on the question 1, the actual uh, cross-section detail drawing. Um, the basic drawing they came up could be summarised as an ease drawing, but there was a little bit of um, some extra information that wouldn't have been kind of standard for previous years when this drawing came up. So the first thing was that it was based on a timber frame house. The second thing was that the roof type was a prefabricated trust roof, rather than your cut roof that we would be used to drawing. Um, and there was some extra details given about um, the type of the timber frame, the concrete outer leaf, the insulated cavity, the service cavity, scale 1 is to 10, which is normal enough. So what you should do with this question 1, first of all, is just read through the description that they give you and base uh, all of your details off that for when you're doing your drawings. So make sure that the important information that is mentioned is actually relevant on your drawing when you have it finished because that's where the marks are going. So we'll read through it. The house has an internal span of 6 metres. That's fine. So that's how far our drawing is going to spread over. Uh, the external wall is timber frame. Again, very important that we don't draw a block wall for that. We have the block outer leaf and we have the 200 millimetre timber frame inner leaf with 60 mil insulated surface cavity. So we have a block outer leaf with timber frame on the inner and we have 60 mil of a cavity for surfacing. The roof which is slated has prefabricated trusted rafters. Okay, so they're pre-made and then brought on site and the pitch is 30 degrees. To a scale of one is to 10, draw a vertical section through one external wall and one rafter length Show the typical construction details from 400 millimetres below the ceiling joists through the external wall and eaves up to the ridge level. Include the ventilation path to the roof, so that's important, they're looking for our ventilation path. That's just going to come through your eaves. And show three courses of slates at the eaves. That should be fine. Include three typical dimensions of the roof structure. Part B is then asking you to clearly indicate the design detailing to ensure air tightness at the junction of the ceiling and the external wall. So that's just basically going to mean packing in some extra insulation and making sure we have a cavity closer at the top of the eaves also. When you have that in case, uh, you also need to remember that you will need some sort of ventilation to avoid the timber from rotting. So when you begin to draw the question, um, you should always try and draw the question in the same kind of logical steps that the house would actually be built. It makes more sense to you as you're drawing it out that way. So what I would start off by doing would be to start drawing my concrete outer leaf block coming up and my inner leaf, my timber frame wall coming up and put the cavity in between them. Now they asked for 400 mil below eaves detail, that's asked in the question, that's how far down they want us to go. So I'll just roughly estimate how far down that would be. Remember the scale is 1 to 10, so everything that I draw is being divided by 10 in regard to the reading measurements. So I'm going to start off drawing my concrete wall coming up. So it would normally be 100 millimetres in width for a concrete block, therefore 1 to 10, that's going to give me a width of 10 millimetres on my scale drawing. Put in the little detail for my concrete block, so I always do that by just having some angle lines. But again, if you have a different symbol, that's fine as long as it's uniform throughout all your drawings. We need a 60 mil gap for the cavity. That's going to be packed with insulation later on, and then we have 200 millimeters of a timber frame structure for the inside wall. So again, we'll divide that up. Make sure we have the right spacing. So we have our cavity with our insulation and then our timber frame. Remember the, the inner wall is going to go slightly higher and that's what the roof is going to rest on for our wall plate and the other details. Put our insulation in. With your inside finish, make sure you have some sort of a plaster board on the inside. You can label all this up at the end. So when you have your walls built up, the next stage would be to put in some of the ceiling joists. So the ceiling joists are going to rest in on top of your inside leaf, like 
like so. The height of a ceiling joist would be 225, so when you divide that by 10, give you your scaled measurement. And remember, these are prefabricated truss, so they all come as the one unit. The, the pitch of the roof is given as 30 degrees. So make sure that's the correct pitch that you use. And then that's going to run off for the eaves detail. Trust roofs usually have a kind of a zigzag pattern of pieces just to structurally keep it together. And again, there will be particular angles these should be at, but in terms of actually drawing out the answer to the question, you can just estimate roughly what it should look like. So we're asking the drawing to get uh, the details up as far as our ridge board, so when we get up towards the centre of the roof, we can actually cut the drawing off at that point. Okay. Now, after this stage, the, um, all the truss roofs are in place, one in front of the other, and the next thing you'll start to do would be to put some sort of felt over it to make it weatherproof. So your felt can be shown up as just a thin black line or any other colour if you want, as long as you label it. Make sure it overlaps over the rafter itself, and then you can begin to put your slates on. So before you put the slates on, you need to have your battens in place. Your timber battens are going to be nailed down all to the rafters. And they're going to be centered approximately four hundred from each other. Now in the question they only asked they want three layers of um of slates put on. So when you're slating a house, you always start from the bottom upwards. So you start at the eaves part of the house and you build them up on top of each other, overlapping up towards the ridge board. So you should do that in your drawing. The very, very edge of your rafter should have an angled piece on it, and that just allows you to feed in the first slate at a slight slope. Again, overhanging over your rafter area, down into where your gutter is going to be. And then from then on, you can overlap them by approximately half each time from the batten above. So from this one, for example, it's going to overlap the previous one by roughly half, and we continue that on. Okay, so that's enough for the slates. Now, when water runs down these slates, it has to have somewhere to go, so we can put in our ease detail here, our gutter, our fascia, and our soffit boards. Again, I up what it should look like, particular measurements although you should always try and have the measurements as accurate as possible. When you come to smaller details like this, 9 times out of 10 when it just looks right, you get most of the marks. I'm just going to sketch out a gutter shape really quickly, but if you're in the exam, please take your time and do it with a compass. Look a little more neater, I just want to get the drawing done quickly for the video. The next stage of construction would be to seal off the cavity here. So we're not going to allow any burbs or any of the weather elements to get in so you just just a cavity sealer there which will allow us to open that if we need to service for any reason last stage of the drawing would be pack the whole attic with insulation so super insulated to make sure that we have it airtight and that we retain any heat that would be escaping from inside of the house so there'll be lots of insulation uh, above the ceiling joists and we can layer that up like so. Okay, so two to three layers will be enough. Lots of insulation in between the actual roof rafters here, the common rafters, and lots of insulation packed in around the eaves detail as well. Now, if you can put the insulation perhaps in a yellow or a pink colour, it'll just stand out from your drawing and it won't just look as messy when it's all the same colour on top of each other. Because this is completely sealed now, that could cause a problem with rot inside this area, especially if some sort of dampness got in it would rot away with it. So what we need to do is have some sort of a ventilation. So you normally have a ventilation below your soffit board to allow fresh air to get in, controlled amount of fresh air, and obviously when it enters the attic it has to go out as well. So you'll usually have some sort of a ventilation underneath your battens and your felt approximately 
this location in the roof. Okay. So this particular example of the drawing is very rough and ready. It's just to give you an idea of the different members that should be in place, the structure of the drawing, how you should put one layer on top of the other. And to give more of an indication, I know lads look at final drawings and look at sample answers, but it's very hard to know where to start when you're looking at a sample answer. So what I always encourage you to do is to try and start from the way the house will be built. Build up the walls first, then put on the structural parts of the roof, then start doing the felting and the slating, Add in your face, your soffit, your gutters, final stage, seal up around the eaves detail, add in the insulation. Do it as you would build a house and you should be able to answer the question, learn off how to do it quicker using that method. Insert your standard measurements so you can put in the measurements that are given in the question. You can put some in for the cavity wall, the block, the timber frame. You can put in your typical measurements for your slates, the distance between the battens, the size of the rafters. Any of those would be acceptable. Also make sure when part B is asked for the air tightness, we've given our answer here through our ventilation and our vent here, sealing it off with all the extra insulation. We have the felt overlapping down over the eaves to prevent water from getting in. Just make sure that you highlight that. So wherever you've marked off the area for concentrating on part B, just have a little arrow pointing towards it. Uh, label it as part B and give a brief description of what's happening on that particular part of the drawing. 